The slim form, dressed in dark green, sat on the stump, his face completely devoid of any features save for two golden insectile eyes. Despite this, he raises the flute to his chin and begins to play a haunting tune. Welcome to Monster of the Week. This week, we are taking a look at the Banshee. Ray. Unrelated to the Banshee, the Banshee Ray is sure to leave your players guessing. One thing I really think the Monster Manual lacks, especially in 5th edition, is the presence of Fae. There are a few good ones, don't get me wrong, but if you want the Fae Wilds to be more prominent in your setting, your options are a little bit more limited than I'd like them to be. There are so many interesting Fae from the other source books that haven't made the conversion to 5th edition, and the Bantray is definitely one of them. The very first thing you'll notice about these weird creatures is their lack of facial features. This is apparently due to a curse bestowed upon them by a very powerful Fae Lord due to some crime one of their ancestors committed. The punishment to take away their mouths was clearly meant to be ironic since the Bantray love music. Without a mouth, it would be impossible for them to play their infamous flutes. Fortunately for the Bantray, Trays, and unfortunately for your players, they were able to retain some of their musicality by pledging their allegiance to some of the less benign Fey Lords. Hence, the magical monstrosity you see before you. Looking like a zealot from StarCraft isn't their only talent, however. The Bantray is not just a skilled opponent, but a smart one too. They're actually quite malevolent and will often try to take out the strongest opponent first so that they have time to toy with the weaker ones. They don't appear to be wearing much armor either, but like some Fey, they get to add their charisma bonus to their armor class. So they can be deceptively tough to hit. This is especially important for our faceless friend here because they excel at mid-range combat. The flute I mentioned before is not just for making music. The Bantray's flute can be used to create several magical effects, and it also doubles as a blowgun which can fire darts that do several things. The mystical melodies all affect a 60 foot radius centered on the Bantray, and they all use the same DC for the required will save. Any creature who fails the will save is subject to the song's effect, and if you succeed, you're fine. The first one of these mystical songs is called the Dread Dirge. Any creature that hears it needs to make a will save, if they fail, they're shaken. The second possible effect, and my personal favorite, is called the Gibbering Sing-Along. This catchy tune forces the listeners to blather meaningless sounds along with the music. Any affected creatures automatically fail on any stealth checks, they give away their position if they're hidden or invisible, they straight up can't talk, and they can't cast any spells that have verbal components. I really like this ability even just mechanically, because it really nullifies a lot of things your players often take for granted, and flavor-wise, it's just a really funny effect to imagine. The third and final effect is called the Traveler's Tune. This upbeat song forces the affected creatures to move at least 20 feet per round. This can force some of your players who engage in a lot of melee combat to choose between retreating or taking attacks of opportunity. It can also result in some really interesting combat depending on your environment. For example, if your party is on a bridge, or if they're in some kind of acidic swamp. Basically anywhere where there's certain places that your players don't want to move, this can really create some interesting dynamics when they're forced to kind of work around that and still try to get in as many hits as possible. Because of this ability alone, I would recommend running a Bantray encounter on a grid if you don't usually play with one. Positioning in a fight with a Bantray is very important, both for you as the monster and for your players as well. It's not totally necessary, but it definitely makes things a lot easier. As I mentioned a little bit earlier too, the Bantray's flute also has the capacity to fire darts. The Bantray can fire a ton of these darts in rapid succession, creating a 15 foot cone of darts. With a successful deck save, anyone caught in the area can cut the damage in half, but it's still a very good AoE ability, especially if the Bantray can position itself in such a way that it can affect the majority of the party. Anyone who fails that deck save is going to be taking a ton of damage. And even if they succeed, the Bantray is still getting in some damage on everybody. The Bantray doesn't limit itself to using just mundane darts though. Once per day, the Bantray can fire what is called a low Focus dart. Anyone struck by this dart is immediately sickened and they take a small amount of damage. The reason for the sickening effect is because it causes a swarm of locusts to erupt from the creature's mouth. The locusts then form a swarm that is at the Bantray's command. I feel like this is one of those classic magical abilities that really drives home the idea of dark fey magic. The sickening only lasts for one round, but it does add some pretty good flavor to what's otherwise a really gross ability. More importantly though, having command of a swarm of locusts allows the Bantray to disrupt any casters and make it more difficult for them to use their magic. As if that wasn't all bad enough, Bantrays also have the ability to cast Bestow Curse on a target. The victim of the curse inspires anger in everybody that they interact with. Mechanically, this gives a negative to their armor class as everyone wants to hit them even harder, and it causes a negative 6 to persuasion checks. If your bard is suddenly cursed and everyone he talks to is angry with him, 
That is terrible for the rest of your party. It can also be a lot of fun to roleplay too. Speaking of curses, the ancient curse bestowed upon the Bantry that took away their features in the first place can be a really interesting plot hook, especially if your players are the spiritual and heroic types. Allowing your players to find out why Bantrays are the way they are just through their interactions in the world could lead them on a quest to try to restore their former bodies and thus bring peace to an entire race that may have been wrongfully convicted for the crimes of one. You could potentially set this up by having one Bantray that doesn't really fall in line with the others, you know, one who doesn't really buy into the anger and vengeance that their whole race has against pretty much everyone now. Maybe he seeks out the players and tries to get their help in breaking this curse. Or maybe he's found a way to do it that requires him to go into the material plane and he wants your players as guides. Even if your players aren't interested in pursuing that plotline, it could potentially make for some interesting world building. Due to their creepy visage and demeanor, I also find they make excellent assistance for more powerful characters. I could totally see a Bantray working in the service of a green hag as her featureless assistant. Or maybe even a very powerful druid with a strong connection to the Feywild. They're just one of those creatures that when you see them, even if it's just on the side, you can't help but wonder, what is that? According to the book, Bantrays are commonly used as messengers for the more powerful Fey Lords. So that could make for an interesting hook if you wanted to get your players more involved with the Fey. Perhaps a verdant prince has noticed the deeds of the players in the material world and has sent out a Bantray with a summons. Bantrays have fortunately been gifted with telepathy, so despite their lack of a mouth, they can communicate. And as I always say, you can 100% use these guys as just a random encounter, just to see how your players deal with it. If the party seems aggressive and the Bantray thinks it can win in a fight, there's no reason to not have a little fun in its way to wherever it's going, right? So that is all for this week. I think the Bantry is a really cool creature and I hope you'll find a place for it in your game world. Hopefully you found this video helpful and hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I upload at least one new video every week and I try my best to bring new monsters to your table whenever I can. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time.